Hi, welcome to the I Want to Heal call with Lisa Transcendence Brown. I am Zena Spirit, and we are going to talk about soul tuning today. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Zena. Thank you, everybody. I'm excited to be here with you guys. This is awesome. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Well, um, yeah. Well, we've got a lot to talk about, too, because we're going to talk about um, how uh, about the perceptions about what everything is, because we've moved into vibrational realities, and so they're very much different than they used to be mm-hmm. as far as our, our awareness went. And everybody's coming into new awareness, which is really cool. So we're going to talk about Definitely. vibrational realities and how to understand what's really going on with everybody's body, with their emotions, with their physical world. And how to, uh, this is about tuning vibrationally to a higher vibration. And, and it affects everything, which is really important. So thank you. Um, where would you like to start? We can go anywhere you want. <laughs> All right. We can start with, um, I guess uh, you wanted to talk about how people think something is broken, that they need to fix themselves, yeah. where where they are is not enough. And so yeah. that that mentality is a really hard one to get stuck in. Yeah. Well, that's because it's our habit way of thinking. That's the way we learn. And so this, this means um, actually we have to desire something different. Otherwise, we keep getting the same reality over and over. And so... It's important to understand that as we shift the way we think about things, the way we view things, then our perception changes. And as our perception changes, our whole reality changes because all our realities are based upon our perceptions and our beliefs and the energy that we hold inside our physical body, which we're going to talk about that too. But um, as we start to realize that, that there's, as humans, and I separate everything into human and the soul or human and the higher self so to explain because they are completely different existences. Um, at first, we I'm going to say at first and in the beginning a lot just to describe a process because every bit of this is just the process of the soul awakening inside the physical body. And when the soul starts to wake up inside the physical body, then we start to see things differently. Um, But our whole physical body starts going through a huge and rapid transformation process, upgrade process, and so does our physical reality, too. Um, Our physical body and our physical reality have to align to our soul, which is pure. And we, we return to an existence of love. We return to an existence, forgotten all our memories, come back, but it's not of past lives. It's of who we truly are, and they're all simultaneous, so timelines. We get into, when I start talking multidimensional, it gets into the timelines collapsing and all this kind of stuff, so I'll try not to go there too much. Um, But basically, this is vibrational. We, We focus on our vibrational frequency. And when we start focusing on our vibrational frequency and, and realizing that, um, our perception is that something's wrong with us. When we start, when our soul starts waking up, when our spirit starts waking up inside our body, um, a lot of people lately have been hearing the words, I don't feel quite like myself, and because they're identifying with their human self. And, and what they're feeling uh, is the changes that we go through as we become our true self. And it's very different. We feel very differently. There's a lot of detachment that occurs as we move out of one of the existence into another one. And when I say an existence, everything does change. And how we function, how we live, how we do everything, everything changes. And, and it's in alignment with our soul. And so one of the first things we do when, we, when our soul starts waking up, we call it our human waking up. But technically our human body wakes up. But our soul basically emerges from our, the inside of our body and as this occurs, um, a lot of us will find that we have more than one of us inside is what it feels like. And there's a basically a battle between the head and the heart that starts. And, and there's a lot of conflict and a lot of confusion because you don't know who to listen to 
And and it, a lot of us, it makes us go against everything we learned. It makes us go against everything we believed or we thought um, in order to dissolve those old beliefs. So for this part of it, it, it's about understanding this is a part of an evolutionary process of us becoming souls walking in physical bodies, basically. But the physical body and the physical reality we're in alignment with our human existence, which was unconscious. And it didn't give us the capability to do the things that, that to use our abilities and all these amazing things and live in the magic and the bliss and the awesomeness that comes with higher existence, higher dimensional existence. So when we start to realize that there's not really anything wrong with us, that our bodies are upgrading, it's more about changing the words to change the mentality, and part of this is by what, what I call reminding ourselves. We remind ourselves constantly, there's nothing wrong with me. We tell ourselves whatever it takes, and we re- reprogram the way we think. Um, and so for this part of it, it, it's to remind ourselves, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm perfect the way I am. I'm, I'm, I'm exactly as I'm supposed to be. This is about accepting ourselves. This is about loving ourselves fully and loving our bodies and coming to gratitude and appreciation for everything we have. Um, Instead of wanting something, we always want something. As a human, it's never enough. We want something else. And and it's basically coming to a place where we accept everything in present moment. We get really present, present moment, and we realize what we have is enough. What we have is awesome. Awesome. Even if it's not awesome right then, it's more the mentality of getting to the place where we do understand and become grateful for what we do have. And the moment we become grateful for what we do have, then we then we get more of those things. And so it's more focusing on if our physical body is going through something. Instead of thinking something's wrong with it, realizing what it truly is. And it's always going to boil down to a lack a compromise, our physical body is clearing all of those old energies that were held in cellular memory inside, in the organs, in the teeth, in the bones, um, in the skin. And we're going through huge upgrade processes where light uh, of our soul, of our higher selves, uh, actually moves through the body. And there will be kundalini awakenings. Some are spontaneous and some are over time. Um, they ignite the fire inside, the fire of the soul, but it also ignites the fire of the human. That's where a lot of the anger and stuff is coming from for a lot of people. Um, it's fuel. It's energy. And to realize that our physical body and our physical world, they're being upgraded into a higher frequency, into a higher density plane, into a higher vibrational existence, one we didn't have access to before. When we came to the 2012 gateways, everything changed. We, we are, we're able to access multidimensionality um, full-blown. And so we're not limited to our old human existence as we once were. So as we activate light inside, as our heart opens, our soul comes through. And that's where, at first, the battle between the head and the heart starts. Uh, because the soul, our soul, as a soul being, um, our connections have to be pure. Our, everything has to be pure. And it's a purification process of all of the impurities, all of the distortions, all of, all of the lower, if you will, vibrational things uh, were housed in our physical body. And as our body starts to wake up, um, it starts to hurt. All the energy runs through the body and it starts activating all the pain, all the emotions that were trapped inside for a release. And so instead of looking at our, what we're going through as a problem or something wrong with us, we start to realize there's nothing wrong with us. This is how it's supposed to be. This is a good thing. This is for me. I'm clearing and cleansing and purifying. I'm getting rid of all of those things that kept me in lack. I'm getting rid of all of those things that blocked my abundance. I'm getting rid of all of those things. But there are certain things we have to do, which means um, becoming conscious means to tune in inside to the way we're feeling and to honor the way we feel. And we suppressed feelings for a really long time. We, there was a lot of judgment. We didn't honor and we didn't respect ourselves. Um, we worried about everybody else outside first. And, and this is a co- complete shifting 
um, out of that. And when we start to do this, there's a lot of guilt because uh, many, most, we're, we're taught, worry about everybody else, make sure everybody else is taken care of, which is a part of the process as well. So when it's time for our soul, our spirit, our, our, our light body to awaken, um, we have to reverse everything and we have to start to care about ourselves and we have to nurture ourselves, love ourselves, respect our bodies um, and take time for ourselves, do what we need because as we do this, everything starts to change. As we do this, Eventually, so we, we call all of those pieces of our soul that, that have been separated off across time, that have been separated off into existences and identities and attachments and cords. And, and basically, we go through and we, and we cut all the cords. We clear all the contracts, soul contracts that we have here. We, we work through resolving everything and recalling all of our aspects. Um, and we merge as a soul merge as a soul with all of our higher self aspects inside our physical body. But our physical body, I'm, I'm explaining the process more for the picture right now, and then we can talk about it a little bit more. But basically, as we recall all of these aspects of ourselves, they are higher light. They are higher frequencies. And our physical body starts out carbon-based, and it evolves. The, the light body activates, and, and then we go crystalline. And so there's a process of carbon-based to crystalline. We're actually leaving lower density realms where our physical body can no longer maintain the lower frequencies anymore. Earth completed basically a part of its ascension process where the crystalline grid work came online. And this is housed also in the earth, in the atmosphere, everywhere, and inside our physical body, and they all link up. And so the physical body will go through a massive upgrade process and we can look at it as a victim and think something's wrong and keep trying to fix things and interfering with the process um, until we can't do that anymore because there will come a point where we're not allowed to interfere. There will come a point that the body will shut down. There will come a point that the body will fight back and it will say enough's enough. You, you can't do this to me anymore. You need to listen to me because her body will actually speak to us and tell us what it needs from us. But as humans, we don't listen to the body. We, we basically use the body. We don't respect the body. We just think we're, we're in this body, um, and, and this is the way it is. But our physical body actually will carry us through, if you will, um, and how multidimensional existence which means that we have access to multiple dimensions, which means we have access to many different realities uh, all at once. But in the beginning for this to happen, um, our body's got to go through a massive upgrade process. It's got to hold a lot of light. We, we clear all of the programs, um, all of the thoughts, all the beliefs, all of the energies that were held that were fear, lack, judgment, um, blame, shame, guilt competition, not enough, unworthiness, all of these things, all of these are now have to clear the body. And so when we understand this, then it completely changes our perspective. So when we're going through something, um, a lot of people are going through heart issues right now, heart palpitations, where the body is trying to pump life, pump light to the rest of the body and wake the rest of the body up. There's a lot of numbness. There's a lot of breathing issues. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of everything that goes on. Um, and I can speak to this because I went through it myself. I chose the extreme, which means that I went, um, I waited till the last moment. I was very stubborn. I had a lot of masculine energy, and I was a survivor uh, of everything. And survivors have more walls up. They have more protection mechanisms. And, and so it's harsher. When we start to wake up, it's actually harder on us, if you will, um, because, we're so strong and so stubborn, and we have so much fight inside, which is why you see a lot of what's going on right now. It's, it's the masculine energy that, that's being triggered, um, human masculine, because we have human masculine, human feminine, each one of us do. And then we have divine masculine, divine feminine, and then we have some other ones too. But for this part, um, our masculine energy is what put the walls up around our hearts. Our masculine energy is where our fight and our stubbornness is. And our feminine energy is um, 
basically, I guess the easiest way, each each masculine and feminine has have attributes, if you will, as to the energies. So feminine energy is softer, but it's also more wounded, and it's more of a victim, if you will. Masculine energy is also victim, but it's a fighter victim. And they have opposite energies uh, a lot of times. And then since everybody has both, it gets confusing because if you're if you're operating both of those, then 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 there's double, if you will, to clear. And so, am I making any sense here, Gina? <laughs> in my own track for what yeah. we want to do. <laughs> you definitely are. I did have one question about sure. how um, how are like a lot of people because I was born with my. Uh, condition and stuff like that say it's like ancestral and so like I'm clearing the past Mm -hmm. DNA stored in my body is that kind of your philosophy as well well it's more than a philosophy I've lived through it not his experience yeah so it's not a philosophy it's it's yes we're clearing in one perspective we're clearing ancestral Um, but technically all it's all of our existences are housed in our body now so when we clear, we clear all timelines, we clear all existences, but we look at it until we clear all of the unconscious programs um, in our physical body, then we attribute it a lot of times to, it is ancestral, but it's not. It's not the way we think it is, if you will. Um, so when you say, like, you were born with this, um, our body will we'll repair itself if we will raise our vibration as high as we can and keep it as high as we can all of the time. Um, if there's anything that can be repaired, the body is intelligent itself. It will repair all of those things. But we have to be willing and believe because belief and, and non-willingness, non-commitment to, to the new belief, a lot of people will tell themselves they can't. Well, this can't happen. This can't be achieved. I would pull this. Well, and I'm going to use your Xena just for fun only because it's easy mm-hmm. not knowing the whole history. But to say, to, to say I was born with this, then that immediately gives a lot of people an excuse not to believe that it can change. Does that make sense? Yeah, it took me until I was in my 20s and had a dream. And then I had the awareness that it could be different. But yes. I never even had any hope or des- desire. Uh, I I wouldn't say desire. I just right. never even gave it much thought because it was just like this is how things are, and I can't exactly. change it. So why am I going to, you know, be beating my head up a brick wall basically, you know, right. um, when, when it can't change? And so um, that's when I started my journey. Was basically okay. when I had that awareness or awakening or whatever you want to say. Um, And so it's been a long journey to be able to even get this far. But um, that's, uh, yeah. So, and I know that um, thought patterns uh, create your reality and existence. And, you know, it's like I truly believe that it's a possibility, but at some point I must be, somehow preventing it as well like you said the blocks or whatever that are preventing it and that's I guess my further journey to figure out those um, blocks is there anything you can say how we can kind of move into that well and and like one of the things that you said was um, you know you had been under the perception that it couldn't change and you said well you do believe and and and, see I hear everything in frequencies and tones and so I can hear the doubt in your voice inside of you somewhere you still don't believe there's still a doubt well it's been really hit hard over the head with uh, medical professions Mm -hmm. and I've I've been working through that and reading all these inspiring books to get me to see the miracles of life and to see that miracles are possible and that my frequency can raise and I can create that reality and like I said I've had numerous streams to point me in that direction Um, so it's it's getting there but obviously you know I haven't created that either so it's it's, 
Well, no, this is a great example. So let's look at this for a moment because when you talk, um, you you want to believe. You've done a lot of uh, hard work, but there's still the doubt. You're still listening to outside sources. Notice the word source. Telling you conflicting information because you need them to, because you still have doubt. Well, I'm trying to get the belief into myself because if I believe totally in myself, then I'm not going to have any doubt. So I'm not trying. But it's more about establishing that connection with your universe, with source inside, and that being so much stronger than your doubt. The reason I say this is because if we have any part of us that doesn't believe, then, and I'm going to go to frequency just for a moment. Non-belief will manifest before belief will a lot of the time because it's stronger still. It's a lower vibration, and lower vibrations manifest in the physical faster than the higher vibrations, but not anymore. That's changing only because the moment we shift our perceptions, the moment we shift our beliefs. For you, you would have to believe so strongly that you're not willing to listen to anybody tell you you can't. You've got to have so much drive inside of you that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt inside of you that this can change for you. And basically dedicate everything you've got to raising your vibration as high as you can and don't give up. And see, our human aspect will give up. Our human aspect will doubt. Our human aspect We'll listen to what others say. But what will happen is the more we go inside, the more we connect, the more your knowing has to be stronger than your doubt is. Does that make sense? Definitely. And that's why I started the site, to give people that um, connection and that uh, willpower to, you know, go to those places. So. Basically, and what I would say when you say something about blocks, blocks are just beliefs. Blocks are, are they're, they're in the physical body as well. They, they are energy that turn into physical things, okay? But basically, a block is just a belief. And so for, so like with you, and it's the perfect example because we can use this to work with, you would surround yourself with everything that inspires you. You would you would stop listening and stop even believing that you can't. You have to cut that out. And this is where it comes down to choice. We have to cut out everything we don't want in our reality or it's our reality. So every time you listen to somebody tell you you can't, if there's any, if there's one tiny anything inside your body, that holds that belief, then you're going to believe that. And that belief is going to manifest, or I call materialize, it manifests as our human mind. But basically, that, that, that belief is going to manifest in your physical reality for you as long as you believe it. And this is how it works for every one of us. I had all along the way, I went to major physical things. My whole body went into shutdown, and I was on death's door many times. And I had to bring myself back. I had to completely heal my own body. But it started with raising my vibrational frequency, number one, and starting putting things into my body and assisting my body instead of interfering with the process. Notice the word interfere. And it's basically it's fear. Because we, this is about working with our trust and our faith and our belief and making it so strong that we're not willing to accept any less, anything less. And surround yourself with everything that tells you that you can't because you can override that belief system. It doesn't, if you believe those things, they will be real for you. And that goes for every one of us. I had doctors and surgeons, and and I had specialists calling me, telling me I had to hurry up and come in. But this was going to happen once. Several told me I, that I would that I probably had cancer, and I said, No, I don't. I didn't have cancer, but if I had believed them, I would have, because cancer is a belief that manifests in the physical, based upon fear and doubt and anger. I immediately went inside my body and started clearing 
any anger, any guilt, any blame, any shame, so that that could not become a part of my reality here. And intense is an understatement for what I went through. Pain is an understatement because I was holding a lot of separation inside of me. I was holding a lot of lower density programs inside of me, and it was a lot of work too. I had every medical condition. I was on 40 pills a day. I was in renal failure. I had congestive heart failure. I had diabetes, and I was going in coma seven, eight hours a day. I had every medical condition and had been told that I only had a few years to live, that I basically wasn't going to live much longer. And I'm like, no, I'm not having this. No doctor, all the doctors and specialists couldn't find anything wrong with me that made sense. So the only reason I say this is I could have believed that, and the thing that is I did believe that for the majority of my life until I hit death's door, until I was laying there with my finger on 911 ready to dial in the middle of my sleep, not knowing if I was going to make it through the night. I was laying in so much fear and pain. But inside of me, there was this little bitty something that said this isn't true. It isn't going to happen. But for the longest time, I wouldn't listen to that voice. I wouldn't listen to that knowing because I was scared, because everybody else told me. And at some point, I had to decide I wasn't going to listen to them anymore and that I was going to do what I, I didn't have the answers yet. But I I started on a massive mission to figure it out, and I did everything natural. And I went all, I started detoxing, I cleansed my body. I had to stay in detox for a year and a half and and go straight pH alkaline and and start certain things that I wasn't willing to do before because I wanted to live, because I wanted um, something different, because I was tired of being miserable. I was tired of being, quote, sick. And so basically our desire has to be stronger than our desire to listen to what everybody else does. Um, and if we're, if we're willing to listen to that, that's our truth. And, and it's important to understand our truth is insight. And, and it has nothing to do with what anybody else says. Now, others are sent to us to see what we believe. Others will speak truth. And if, if, if that resonates, and this is about vibration, if it resonates with us, then we're like, yeah, that rings true to me, but it doesn't make any sense because a lot of this isn't going to make sense because it's going to go completely against everything we believe. And so basically I had to take charge of my own life. I had to desire it so much. I had to, had to have so much fight inside of me to overcome those obstacles, to overcome the, what ever told, everybody told me. And, and I had to be willing basically to fight for me and, and to be that desperate, if you will. And, and I, because I was such stubborn energy, I always waited until I had no other choice, which is why we do what we do, is so that people don't wait until they have no other choice. They don't wait until they're at that very last moment when everything's been stripped away. And the only reason I use stripped away is because that's what happens when we do not connect to, to source self inside. That's what happens when we don't listen to our higher self inside. That's what happens when we're not open. Um, then, then our world dramatically changes to get our attention because our world aligns for us, but we don't understand that. Um, we, everybody is moving into a higher vibrational existence. And we don't get to hold on to the old ways anymore. We don't get to live in lack. We don't get to live in anger and blame and shame and guilt and judgment and all of those things and greed that we used to live in. All of those things are going. And if any of our existence was built on that, then that's what's shifting and changing for a lot of people. Um, It's called unconscious. And everybody is being moved into full consciousness to remember fully um, all of their existences and their purity and their truth, and it's in alignment with their soul. Every reality now is realigning according to soul sequences and codes. And so when we open up to, to make that connection, when we open up to talk to the universe, when we open up to, to receive, when we open up to listen, 
when we open up to observe and pay attention and really care, then we change it all. But everything in the physical body is storage, basically. It's storage of all the compromise. It's storage of all the hurt. It's storage of all the pain. And when we clear all of that from our cellular memory, then all you've got left is purity and love and bliss and magic and all the things that were hidden deep beneath. Go ahead, Gina. Sorry. Wow, that's a lot to take in. Mm-hmm. Um, it is. <laughs> the um, free gift you're offering, the quantum light activation, will that allow us to help clear out that uh, those negative um, storages, uh, cellular memory? Anything, yes, they will. Uh, the, the quantum light activations actually go speak to yourself. They actually activate that higher dimensional consciousness. It will put you to sleep. Um, If you've not been exposed to really high vibrations before, that's why a lot of people are sleeping right now. It's because the body, one, it repairs itself when you sleep. Um, You anchor higher vibrations in your body when you sleep. All the light codes that are activating, the, the cosmic codes that are activating 24 hours a day now, anchor when you sleep. Um, You integrate when you sleep. And in order to wake up, in order for the soul to awaken, there is a, a process that we go to, through that we have to sleep a lot um, so that everything can occur for us um, easier. But a human says, I don't want to sleep. It, it gets in my way. i got things to do. I'm too busy. I don't have time. And that's when a lot of people find they're getting shut down, that they can't function as well anymore. Um, the light activations, yes, they do. They are quantum, and they go to those things. They speak to those. They activate, but they also activate anything inside that's of a lower frequency. Um, one thing is to change our words from, from positive and negative, because that's a judgment, to we move into vibrations, higher vibration for positive, lower vibration for negative, so that we can actually correlate and understand, well, that's a lower vibration. I don't want that in my life. That's a lower vibration. I don't want that in my body. That's a lower vibration, not a judgment, but a realization, which is key. Because the moment, because our human aspect will actually take higher and lower vibrations and make it a judgment too. That's not what this is about. This is about recognition. If somebody, I'm going to go to people right now for a moment. If somebody around you is always unhappy, then that's a lower vibration. And you're subjecting yourself to that. And we actually have to choose what we're willing to subject ourselves to. We actually have to choose what we're willing to allow in our world. We have to choose what we're willing to continue because um, everything we expose ourselves to, everything we subject ourselves to, everything we allow creates a reality for us, and we don't get a choice unless we're choosing and saying, nope, not anymore. All I want in my world is happy, bliss, magic. And, yes, we go in and out. But the thing about it is, is those things don't ever leave. But it, it's about becoming happy within ourselves um, and being able to maintain that while we do all of the work. Um, we don't judge ourselves. And a lot of people will feel like they're stuck. So I want to talk about this just for a moment because our human will, will judge how far it's come. It will judge how how good or bad it's doing or it's not keeping up when in fact we're clearing all that physical density and we literally vibrate into different dimensions and realities but the physical body in the beginning didn't have the capability because it housed all of the lower vibrational stuff before so basically this is about physical vibration the the quantum light activation any of the courses that I take, anything that I do, the stuff I put in the special offer package for you guys. That's why I did it. We explain all of these things. Um, Crystals, nature, all of these things lend to your vibrational frequency. Sunlight, lots of sleep, your vibration will raise. You want to incorporate more of these things. You want to slow down. You want to pay attention. You want to work on getting present, staying present all of the time, not letting your mind wander off into other things. Um, This is about returning to an existence forgotten, becoming fully conscious. 
And, and conscious means that your heart is open and your mind is open and your energy is relaxed and, and you're functioning at a, at a fre- frequency in unison with your physical body. But in the beginning, all of our bodies were separate. We had the emotional body, the mental body, the physical body, and then our energy body. And as our soul awakens, our energy body activates. And, and that's what a lot of people are feeling movement in their body. That's light. That's energy. That's waking the body up. The numbness, that's the body coming alive. It's not asleep. It's waking up. All these light activations that are occurring, they stimulate the body and the nerves and the nervous system. And we're going through intense upgrades right now, and it's really important for everybody to honor this. All right, Gina, sorry. I want to stop along the way and make sure we're answering everything. Uh, we, uh, Yeah, we do. We actually have, like, 14 questions from um, callers. Okay. Let's so let's maybe go through a couple of them at least. Sure. Um, it says... Uh, thank you for this amazing podcast filled with so uh, so much. I have been going through these stages, not really being aware of them. Now I am now I am in close relation to energies or collectives. The way it works with me is my body physically moves in circles, then this evolves into a dance when I tune in. My question is, can I? be more open and a clear channel for this information coming through my body. I would love to get your insight if you can tune into me today. It's we Pinar. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sir. His name's Pinar. Hi, Pinar. Well, thank you. We can always be more open. And eventually you don't channel anymore. But in the beginning, yes, you do start channeling, um, if, if you will. Um, we have to open up to channeling the energy, and then it becomes ours. So we move beyond channeling eventually. But a lot of people, you'll actually channel it because it'll be a higher frequency than we are, um, which is why, like, meditation and channeling will, will relax. And when the body relaxes, we our vibration can raise. And so the more we try to control things, the more we try to to do these things, it's harder. And I know this is hard for me because when I do questions, I, I tend to give a ton of answers, and the answers become long. So I'm going to have to shorten it really quick to answer can, his question. Um, it's important to realize that, yes, you can always be more receptive. You can always relax more. You can always be in tune more. Um, it, it's more about maintaining that all of the time and not disconnecting. So in the old days, there's a lot of old pre-2012 things that that were basically dispelling those beliefs these last few years. Is In the old days, we would meditate, or we would, some of us couldn't meditate the typical way. We had to get really creative and make up our own. Um, but when we would meditate, our vibration would raise very high. We'd hit the bliss and the magic and the information, but then we would disconnect and go off and, and do our day. Eventually, we started realizing we don't disconnect. We, we carry that energy with us everywhere we go and everything we do. Um, we eventually move it inside, and it's not a thing to connect to outside anymore. But for you, yes, anything that you feel, go for it. And this is the important part, is our belief of what we desire our belief of what we know, our belief, our inspiration, our imagination, those are access to the other dimensions. Our sleep state, access to the other dimensions. And when you start accessing these other dimensions, then your physical body will start upgrading process. The first thing I would say for everybody is replace your word. I'm not sick. I'm not broken. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm upgrading. Um, That's like a really important thing to understand. But for you, yes, I, I would say, um, we always can um, put more energy into um, the things you love, the things that feed your spirit, feed your soul, raise your vibrational frequency. That becomes number one. When I started doing this intentionally, the message was focus on my vibration first. That came first for everything. And from that point forward, um, I started doing everything to get my vibration up. And I went through rapid and extreme clearing and cleansing 
but also accessing the other dimensions really fast. And uh, it kind of throws your world loopy for a little while because it's weird and bizarre, and you'll think you're crazy for a while. So only I want to mention that because when you start activating the other dimension, your sanity is going to come into play, and all your judgment about what other things, and you got to think, and you got to worry about work through that too, because we don't worry about what other people think. Um, they're your projection. So if you're worried about their judgment, it's yours. All right, so I'm going to hold on, Zena. Do you want to go on to another one, or do I need to readdress that one? Uh, no, I think that was good. Cool. Um, you can go on to some other ones. Uh, cool. This is for Darine, and it says, I have a roaring vibration in my center chest. It comes and goes for no known reason. Could this be an, an awakening process? It definitely can. Um, now, one thing I want to say is trust. If you feel that it is, then believe that, because this is one of the things that happens along the way is our belief. We're, our, our beliefs are challenged because we're asked to believe things that don't make sense. We're asked to believe things that we have no proof of yet. We're asked to believe things that are weird and bizarre, and, and that's how this is. And so believe the knowing inside over what everything else in your head tries to tell you. That's key here. Um, you will feel it in your body. And the question is, if you feel, well, yes, that's what this is, then, then our job is to believe that, number one. Um, the roaring vibration, yes, you're going to feel vibrations through the whole body. It starts around the heart. Um, you'll feel, my cells move 24 hours a day. We've got crystals inside our bodies that shake. It gets really weird and bizarre. There's a whole lot of stuff that happens um, along the way. The whole body comes alive. The whole body awakens as the soul, spirit, awakens inside the body. So in the old days, we would say, oh, let me go ask spirit. Well, there's nobody to ask anymore. In the beginning, we do ask spirit. We do ask higher selves. But eventually, we become those things. And there's nobody to ask. It's inside the body. So if we just bypass that let me go ask up there and let me go inside, then we start to realize that we can bring all of that that used to float around outside in our energy field inside, and we can integrate faster if we're honoring the process and paying attention to what we feel. Um, for you, the roaring vibration, yes. Um, the, the frequencies are shifting continually now, so you'll feel it and then you won't, and then you'll feel it and then it'll get really, really strong. There are times that the heart gets hit, it feels like a defibrillator, and it's electrical shocks. There are times that electrical shocks run through the body of the spine. That's the uh, kundalini and the crystalline being activated. Um, our body breaks out. Um, imaginary bumps, we itch. Those are star particles. Um, the eyes, uh, you can't, you lose focus. Hearing gets all out of whack. Smells get very enhanced. This is a part of your consciousness expanding from the inside out. And so hopefully that will help. Yes, it can, um, because absolutely everything in our existence is this. It's just that we don't understand that in the beginning. So it's more about wrapping our, our mind around how big this is. Um, and it is simple, though, and that's important to understand. It doesn't have to be so complicated unless we complicate it. So hopefully that will help. Okay, Zena. All right. Well, we kind of have two flip sides of the coin of cool. uh, similar. So we have Temperance who wants to know, are we taking our bodies with us? Is this the end of the need to die again? And then I have another caller who I guess is anonymous, and she says, I've been working with you for two years, and she wants to know how – to go through grief, she just lost the daughter mm -hmm. of her best friend that died two weeks ago. She was okay. only 18 years old and had cancer. Okay. So let's talk about both of those. Temperance with you. Um, taking the bodies with us and the end of the need to die. Yes, it is. Um, it, it is. You bring your body with you. Um, you expand into the other dimensions, but you hold those dimensions inside. Your consciousness expands, and your body actually, see, it's the opposite. But we go through many deaths. And this is how I saw it as I went through it, is that's why so many people are repeatedly going through such problems, if you will, and I don't like that word, but I have to use it right now, 
um, is because each part of the body has to go through a death. Each organ held separation. Each Everything has to reverse itself, shut down, and start back up again. So the longer we held out unconsciously, the, the more intense it is. If we were conscious the whole time, we just hadn't cleared a lot of programs, then it's not as intense for a lot of people, but there is not one person on this earth in, in moving into heaven on earth, in moving into the higher realm, in, in having this existence, and we've been on new earth for years, and having this existence means letting everything go that is not in alignment with your absolute highest frequency self and your soul. Your body comes alive. It doesn't die but it goes through many deaths because everything inside of it's got to die off. And all of these light frequencies move through the body, and basically they obliterate the old programs. They kill all that stuff off. Um, our body will emit radioactivity. We have all kinds of weird things that occur, gamma rays moving through the body, um, all these cosmic light frequencies moving through. Um, the physical body goes through a lot, and it gets intense. There is a period that we go through. We've activated so much light that we don't even feel our body anymore, and, and that's on purpose, too. Um, it gives you the capability to function and let your body do its thing. So the answer to yours, temperance, is yes, it is. Um, we don't have to unless that's the path our soul chose. If our soul did not choose to finish out this incarnation, um, then the body will die. And I was shown many months ago to help people focus on integration of the soul inside. Because when you integrate your soul inside your body, then your body wakes up, but it doesn't have to die. So the answer to that is yes, it is. But it's going to take each person being really dedicated and committed and doing whatever it takes in order to have it easier, if you will. Because the more stubborn we are, the harder it is. So hopefully that will help. Great question. Thank you. Um, for the one who uh, talked about um, working for the last few years and, and losing the friend and the grief. This mm -hmm. is the hard part for us as humans to understand, but as souls, we totally get it. And, and so everything that occurs is to get our heart open fully. There is a lot of pain. There's a lot of grief. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of everything that's got to clear because we're not just clearing the human existence anymore. We're clearing every existence we've ever had. So that that's why the anger and the grief is so big for people. Because it's not just what they think it is. They need a trigger to get the energy out. They need a trigger to open the heart. A trigger is an activation. And so basically everything occurs to get our heart open. Everything occurs to bring more love through. But all the grief, all the blame, all the shame, all the compromise, all of that's got to go. For you, the point is to release the grief. Let it go. Remember, and the reason I say this, if you've got to cry, cry, because this is a cellular memory cleanse. If you've got to get angry, we do this consciously. Get angry. And there's many ways to use the energy in a very productive way. But it's more about honoring the feelings you have and not judging them and we, we shift into a place where we appreciate that person. We find the beauty in the contract with that person. They're giving us the gift of love. They're giving us the gift. Um, they, they chose as a soul to move on, but we attach to the human body and, and we go through the grief. Whereas if we connect with their soul as a soul, we can see the beauty in the entire thing and the gift that they're giving to every person which is to bring them into full remembrance and beauty again. And so we focus on the gift they're giving. We focus on the, the grief is the separation. The grief is the purpose. The grief is what's standing in the way of that pure divine essence love. And, and it's got to be cleansed from cellular memory. It's got to go. So honor the grief, but also look at the gift as a soul that he's giving every person, helping them wake up. He's helping souls wake up. He, she, the friend, um, the daughter's friend. Uh, and so we don't understand as humans that death by others is a gift, that it is to, as a soul, help our soul wake up, and that the soul doesn't die. The soul goes on. The soul is free. 
Um, so it's more about focusing on the soul and the gift that it brings and honoring the process of the grief and letting it cleanse because once it does, your heart's going to open huge and you're going to have all this profound love that's going to come through. And all of that was in the way. So I hope that helps. And take care of yourself. Honor yourself. It's, it's really important right now. Okay. Beautiful. I think we should go to a live caller. Awesome. And the one that I'm choosing is from Summerton, Arizona. Hi. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello. Hi. Oh, okay. Great. Hi. Um, I have a question about um, the well. When a when I came into this existence, I was always in um, uh, survival mode, and you know I grew up that way. I married into a, you know family life that you know was always struggle, always. But I always had this trust that everything would be all right. Right. Um, I've I've since then got out of that mentality of um, of that the survival awesome. mode. Yeah, and a lot of hard work. <laughs> it is, but, but it's um, still in your body, right? I I believe so, and I just don't know where it is, where I'm holding it. I feel great physically. Um, there mm-hmm. are some things when I work, when I listen to your things, and I lick, I listen to it. You know, I listen to all of it at one, the whole package, and oh, uh, thank it's a little. You. It, it's uh, very intense, but wasn't it uncomfortable. So, so it was. Um, it, it's uh, but get, it, did... it can get intense because it goes straight to the core of whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely is, and I know notice that I've been um, working in my sleep. Um, yes, you will. Awesome. But I, I, yeah, and I don't remember it though. Not all of it, but okay. I've been waking up in my yeah. sleep and. Um, you and will. being, I guess, lucid. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. So, I'll, so I'm on the right track. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely so. Um, okay. So for you, um, security and safety is located primarily in the root chakra, but it, it's okay. it's relative to walls around the heart. So basically, work on, always work on the heart, um, and, mm-hmm. and relaxing and opening your energy up. But the root chakra and the sacral chakra area is where the, the most of the security stuff is going to be housed. And so, like, this is, how do you feel about the color red? It's stimulating. It's stim- I that's, like it. Okay, great. You want, you want things that stimulate the root chakra. Now, a lot of people don't understand, I think it's worth mentioning here, that these energies stimulate which means that they're going to stimulate sexual stuff too, which is important to understand because they're, when they do this, they're going to stimulate all of those distortions to clear. The mm-hmm. liver houses um, anger. The, the kidneys house fear. And so all of these organs, we cleanse and we clear. But all of these things, when we start understanding how the body works, then what happens is we start assisting the body with cleansing and clearing and opening up. Do some root chakra. Do some chakra opening exercises um, and and work with that area. Um, But it's important to understand that you you need your body as relaxed as you can. And for a lot of people, I tell them, close your eyes. Close your eyes and just be. Close your eyes and just let everything go. Close your eyes and breathe. The moment you close your eyes, you disconnect your mind's ability to maintain control, or you can hear the thoughts going on and listen to them and realize they're not true. They're just trying to convince you of things. And then I've been what happens? That, yeah. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Go ahead. No, so I've been re- realizing that. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. Close your eyes, and your heart can. And immediately, for everybody, I sat for years with my eyes closed, learning to tune learning to listen to the tones and the frequencies in people's voices. And what's, what I started doing was as I started to understand, I started to understand myself. We use the outside world to teach us, and we pay attention to the energy of all things. This is about the energy. So we're not angry. It's anger energy. It was stuck in ourselves. We're, we're not 
we're not, um, it's fear energy trying to clear the body. So when people's hearts start palpitating and they go into sweats, that's their consciousness trying to expand. And there's fear in the way. And energy will run through the body and bump against basically uh, the density in the body. And that's what feels like a panic attack. And most have no mm-hmm. idea that's what's really going on is that that's light moving through the body trying to basically trigger the fear so the fear can go. But because we believe the fear, uh, see, humans, if you will, believe the emotion and they believe the thought. For us, we separate the emotion and the thought. And we look at the emotion and we go, oh, wait a minute, this just needs to clear. I just need to honor this emotion right now. But we don't get stuck in it forever anymore. We look at the thought and go, wow, that's not true. I had no idea. We look at what we're convincing ourselves of. We look at at, at the stories we've got going. We're looking at the energy around the story and and all of these things. And when you start doing these, you you start to have all these realizations. Oh, my goodness, that's what I was creating in my world. Because every thought, Mm -hmm. every belief creates a reality. And then you start picking through them going, I don't want that one anymore. Nope. And you just start throwing them out. You can just throw a belief out there. You don't even care anymore. It, it gets really cool and fun if you want to play. But there, there, it can be intense. But it's different. It's an energetic intensity. It's not as intense as it used to be. Um, once we move to the energy of all things, everything changes because the physical reality just represents energy. Okay. And, and so we look at that person and we go, oh, that represents all of my lack of power within me. Or we look at this situation and go, oh, that represents my victim mentality. And we, and, and we don't judge. We, mm-hmm. we actually give ourselves a big old pat on the back for finally figuring it out. Kudos. Mm-hmm. Great job. <laughs> you see where I'm going here? But it's about flipping everything yes. into life. It's about flipping everything into something that's productive and being thankful Mm -hmm. for the new awareness instead of beating ourselves up because of something we believe we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things that I noticed doing uh, when I was um, listening to your thing, I kind of dozed and uh, supposed to good, and I saw I saw everybody as you know in the in the world as you mm-hmm. know, kind of part of me but but seeing me seeing things in me in them and I could see them in a different light that way and uh Beautiful. It, it helped me. So that helped. <laughs> That's all awesome. yes, they they will bring you new awareness because what happens is in that you were expanded. And in your expanded aspect or in your with with your consciousness expands you can see things that you couldn't see before. Mm-hmm. And that's what this is about, mm-hmm. is expanding our consciousness. But but our body has to relax, our mind has to relax, and we have to stop trying to believe mm-hmm. the old things. Human will try to believe the old things and convince themselves, and they'll tell the story over and over and over and try to convince everybody else too. And, and that's not how this works. So for you, when you finally just let go and, 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 and relax and, and you slept, our sleep is different here. We're conscious when we sleep. And so for you, you were able to expand your consciousness and, and finally see something you couldn't see before, which gave you new awareness, which is awesome because that's the gift. That's beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For you, just focus on, on the secu- Just ask. Now, I'm going to say this to you. Ask for it to go. Ask for any um, safety mechanisms. to to come up and cleanse, but ask for it to be kind. The reason I say this to you is when we start asking our higher self, if you will, our our inner, our soul, whatever words you want to use, our universe, I use them all, um, basically we'll oblige, and it'll start clearing them really quickly, and it can get a bit intense. So I Yeah, yeah. I've I've had this worry, and not a worry, but you know, a mm-hmm. nagging sensation that when we first started our um, started on our mini farm, that the mentality of um, you know the survival thing. So I kind of started yep. giving it a different energy, beautiful into that saying, "Well, we're we're actually growing these things and raising these things in order to mm-hmm. feed us uh, better." You know. Yep. 
Well, well and I'm I started that realizing to... that if I started taking everything I had and I turned it into something productive and I used it to give back and I used it to be um, to, to make a difference, uh, and, and I want to say this because it's really important, we don't have to lose things anymore. We had to lose things because we were selfish. We had to lose things because we didn't understand. We had to lose things because we were in survival mode and we were doing it out of fear, judgment, greed, all of those things. But we don't do that anymore. What we do helps everybody. And because every, I started dedicating everything I had to be in service. I started dedicating everything I had to support our new existences. And when I did, that's when I broke the abundance thing. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. So, well, that's one of the ways. There are many ways. But basically, I, I changed how I used things. In the old days, things were for me. And, and then, then I had to be stripped of many things to teach me that's not how this works. And then I was able to see the energy of all things, like, like you said. And then I just started seeing the purposes and the reasons we even had anything at all. And then I started understanding how I was to utilize everything in order to make a difference and to support us and those around us and others doing this too. And so it's multifaceted. But that's beautiful, yes. So just just okay. shift and transform anything you see as survival and safety. Um, and tell yourself, I don't need to protect myself anymore. Because that's what's happening is we protect ourselves in, out of fear. And, and technically, moving into a higher vibrational existence where everything's bliss and magic, we don't need to protect ourselves from that. So it's more about changing the whole mindset of why we're even trying to protect ourselves at all. Does that make sense? Yes. Sir. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. Keep going. That's awesome. Thank you for um, all that. Um, Lisa, do you have a couple more minutes to maybe take on? Okay, great. I have one question about colors. You were saying, like, how Mm -hmm. she felt about uh the color red and for me like for instance i don't like the color red and uh would it be like better for me to step out of my comfort zone and kind yep. of get myself into red or is it better to just be in your comfort zone no you want to push your comfort zone you want to obliterate the cover- comfort zone because if you don't your universe is going to do it for you and the reason i say this is because we don't need a comfort zone anymore Comfort zones were were safe and protective, and they were fear. Um, They kept us lazy. We didn't step up. We didn't step into our soul purposes, uh, a lot of things. But basically, comfort zones go. The higher we vibrate, the less comfort zones you have. Comfort is different here. Comfort is in knowing that everything's always going to be provided. You're always going to be taken care of, not just a little bit, but abundantly. But it also means doing whatever it takes to break down those old belief systems and those comfort zones. So I started learning along the way. Learning is just remembering, okay? Experience is just proof. Experience, lessons are experience. They're they're all the same thing, just different versions of understanding what everything is. Um, The colors that I didn't like were the ones where I had blockages in, in my own body in those chakras. And so I actually had to start introducing all of those colors, and I had to uh, – um, I started with crystals because I loved the crystals. Um, and then I started with my clothes. I went through my closet one day, and I, I only wore black and white for a long time and beige and and no color. And I was really human, really linear, very corporate, very – and you'd never know it now, <laughs> but um, – when I started waking up, your, your soul desires color. Your spirit desires freedom. The soul, spirit, same thing, different aspects. And to me, um, we feed our spirit. Um, our, our soul is what is where the depth of our being is, whereas our higher selves tend to be more guidance 
And so we have all these different aspects of us that, that we pay attention to and we listen to and we honor all of the time. This comes first over everything. And everything changes when it does. Um, I didn't like the color red. I couldn't stand the color red. I couldn't stand many colors. <laughs> and like I started me. real. What, sweetheart? I said you were like me. <laughs> I was. And you know what? I love. Now I've got the biggest red Andara sitting right. I love these colors because when you love them, you clear those blocks. And, and so you work with the. And, and, you get washcloths, you get towels. It doesn't matter. You introduce a fluorescent light, not fluorescent, that's not what I'm looking for, vibrant and colorful. Your soul wants vibrant and colorful. It wants all these colors. But, but the, our human aspect doesn't like those colors because they represent a blockage within us. So technically, yes, you want red, you want orange, you want, I didn't like yellow. Yellow is your power. Yellow is that the was, solar sun. That was, that was mine too, orange, red, and uh, yep. yellow. And yep. uh, I actually, I'm a painter, and I painted with all uh, the rainbow colors, basically, and awesome. I have it right behind my uh, monitor, so it's at, with me at all times, and mm -hmm. so I kind of use that as a balancing tool. Well, and I didn't come into loving the color red until about a year ago when I started working with the ruby ray. And we activate all these rays of colors. When you mention the rainbow, it's an activation. All these colors are. So as I cleared all of these things within me and hit that phase, then the color automatically came. So it was more about just raising my vibration, raising my vibration. In the beginning, I went and got plants, which bring life in, and I got colors, different colors. And, and and so you do whatever it takes to bring more color in because the higher dimensions are more colorful. They're vibrant and they're 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 soft, but they're very pristine and clear. And you actually start seeing the other dimensions. They look different. They look softer. You can see the crystalline energies. Um, you can see all kinds of things if you really pay attention. But there are crystals in your eyes, and as they activate, it hurts. They itch, and your vision goes blurry. Your mind will also go to a whole lot of stuff too. Gravity will go in your body. Um, you'll 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 um, get all bobbly headed and stuff. Memories will go. You won't be able to remember anything. You're not supposed to. You're doing dimensional shifts. Um, it'll come back, but it's different when it does. So there's a lot of physical things that occur that that most don't understand but it's a very normal and natural part of an evolutionary process that everybody is going through now. Um, colors, introduce them and, and work with them as much as you can. Um, and, and just if they become, what I started doing was I got um, plain paper, about stock paper, or, or little journal sketch pads with no lines, and I got colored magic markers. And I started working with the color magic markers, and I write everything in different colors. And I have all these different colors, and it lends to creativity. It's a part of becoming create, creative, which lends to becoming a creator again. And so each one feeds into the next thing. Does that make sense? Perfect. All right, we'll take one last uh, caller from Alberta. Say hello. Hello, Holly. Hello. It is Leanne in Canada. Hi, Leanne, love. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're on the show. Oh, thank you. I am too. And you guys too. <laughs> um, this is a question from the beginning, so I'm not sure if you okay. answered or not. Um, I know you've shared this before in other shows. The um, uh -huh. question is, again, with the Frequency shift and the tonings daily. I'm hearing big, uh, and I couldn't remember what that was. Was that the plasma? I can't. I couldn't remember what that meant. So I was just asking for some clarity with the tones. Okay. Well, it's all things, and the reason I say that is because as we clear our human thoughts, they're replaced with frequencies and tones. Uh, our soul hears in frequencies and tones. You're hearing the whole universe. Um, I hear every planet. Uh, I hear the moon, 
I hear the sun, I hear the crystalline, I hear everything. And 24 hours a day, that doesn't stop. I hear each frequency. Now, I've spent years matching up every tone and figuring out which, how they affect the physical world collectively, individually, and how they affect the physical body, which is what I write for everybody and, and share. They change through the years. They change. Every time we do a huge shift, the frequencies change. So I don't hear solar flares anymore because I don't hold those frequencies inside, whereas everybody else, not really, but I'm making this up, will go through a solar flare. I hear crystalline because Mm -hmm. in my reality, they're crystal. We don't have the flares. We don't have the anger. We don't have that inner physical body. So the tones and frequencies actually change according to us and where we're functioning from at that time. Now, you're hearing as a soul, as a higher self, you're hearing the universe. And when I hear people talk, I hear their voices and their words, but I hear them in tones and frequencies, so it doesn't matter what words they say. I hear the truth of what they're transmitting, Um, becoming a crystal. You become a transmitter and a receiver um, along the way, too. And so... For you, it's your higher self talking to you. It's messages being delivered. Um, what I started doing was tuning into them. And as you know, Leanne, um, I wore earplugs for a year and a half, two years, mm-hmm. um, blocking out the outside world and listening only to the frequencies and the tones, which meant that I was going to upgrade really fast because those frequencies actually tune your body. Mm-hmm. They'll tune you to the frequencies of your soul. They'll tune us to the frequencies of the universe, and they'll help clear anything out of our body. So I made them louder, um, but it got intense. Um, after a while, I didn't need the earplugs anymore because all I hear is frequencies and tones. Um, and your hearing will be will adapt um, throughout your whole body. You no longer technically need just human ears. You hear energetically. You see energetically everything. Um, and everything eventually becomes tones and frequencies, and then it moves into sacred geometry and um, mathematics and sequences and equations and ratios. Our soul becomes quantum, and as we become our soul, we become quantum too. And not only that, our cells become quantum. We have light moving through our body, and we're moving through dimensions um, a bazillion things at a time. And it gets a bit weird and bizarre. But for you, um, each tone has a different representation. Mm -hmm. And so what I started doing um, was just matching them up and listening to them and paying attention to what was going on in my physical body when I heard that tone. Mm -hmm. Um, I also was able to listen to every sound. And and it's it's one of my gifts here if you will, as a soul, which means everybody has access to this. There's not mm-hmm. anything that anybody doesn't have access to. We have access to amazing things, but we have to open up to it and believe it because it's going to be a bit weird. But for you, it's higher selves, it's the universe, it's the planets, it's the stars, it's celestial, it's everything. It's in inner earth. I can hear inner earth, the heartbeats that move through the body when inner earth is activating and, and the resonance on earth is changing. Um, as it starts to operate at a different frequency, then, then heartbeats will start activating in our body. We have human stargates that activate too. So um, all of these things. But the tones and the frequencies are um, the whole universe, and it's your guidance. And eventually human words will go, and everything becomes tones and frequencies un- until you go to connect with others. And then that's how your thoughts come through. It is through tones and frequencies. They are just translated into words so you can understand them. So basically, I hear the tones and the frequencies um, instead of the words, but I can hear the words too, if that makes sense. Does that help me, Anne? <laughs> yeah, thank you. It does help. One, one more question. When I wake up in the night, I go back to sleep because I, I know that's um, I touched where you. I'm going to find you're, you're, the you're moving your body so you can clear different things and activate different things and, and I participate in different dimensions too because how you place your body dictates. Go ahead, sweetheart. Yeah, that's right. You've shared that, and I so appreciate that because I wake up and I realize, oh, okay, that was the past, and then I'm on a different side. Oh, okay, this is the 
present. But one thing that's been happening quite frequently is I wake up and it's um, super fast vibration in my body, like really yep. fast. Yep. So We're I wonder what, what. Um, that's called quickening, and that's when your cells start moving really fast. And basically, everything is being sped up so that things come faster, if you will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also vibrations in the earth will also be occurring. You'll you'll be noticing that there are earthquakes going down about the same time that you start feeling your cells move really fast because they are all the same thing. Mm-hmm. So when the, our cells are moving inside our body, they're moving in the, in the earth that fast too. They're moving outside that fast. And, and so it, time speeds up and slows down based how, upon how the energy it is moving at that time. And so for us, time doesn't exist. Time has a flow. It either stops or it's moving or it's fast or it's slow. And we move according to the energy of fast or slow. So when we wake up and things are, your cells are moving fast, that means things outside are moving faster, even though you might not see it. It mm-hmm. speeds things up. We've just gone through a huge template wipe we went through last night, and everything came to a halt. I think I went on and, and typed for everybody, okay, we're at basically stillness point which is zero point, everything will come to a halt in the whole universe, energetically. And then when we wake up the next morning, um, it will be moving really fast. We'll travel really far. We'll do a lot of work in our sleep. Um, when I woke up, my body was zooming, too. I just didn't have time to go on for everybody and write, okay, we're going through quickening right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're going to feel your cells. That's becoming quantum. Your cells are becoming quantum, and that gives you access to the other dimensions. And, and, and your body will be weighted and get heavier, and then it will get lighter. Mm-hmm. Um, your head will um, be more in tune, and then all of a sudden gravity will go, and, and um, you feel like you're flying. So all of this is a part of the ascension process and, and awakening with the soul inside the body, too. So cool. Quantum, Thanks. baby. We love that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, Thank you. both of you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to leave just a few minutes to go over what you're offering to um, us today. So um, it has the quantum light frequency activations. Can you tell us a little bit about them? I can. Um, These actually, um, we picked out ones that were really applicable. The first one is uh, preparation, which will actually explain what happens with the activations, kind of walks you through. Um, I think it's about seven minutes long, and it actually um, explains how to do the activations most um, easier and all. Um, We did one on using your heart and mind to move you to another reality, because this is about understanding that, that our mind controls everything but not really. Our human mind tries. So we actually use our mind to do different things. And so when you start using the mind, it's very different because then then all this knowledge, all this stuff that was inside of you starts to come through. Um, We did one on you are love, pure and simple, letting go of all that is not you. And this focuses basically on bringing us back to that place of love and letting all the rest of it go. Because when we let go, surrender, stop trying so hard. So a lot of people will say, I've been working really hard. Well, that will create resistance, and that will actually get in the way. Here, um, we just stay really present, and if something comes up, we deal with it. If something comes up, we honor it. If something, we just pay attention, we listen. And so these actually get you into that place of working with your higher consciousness, your subconsciousness, whatever, all of they're all the same, different. Um, these activate your other aspects of you that already know these things. And it goes to your cells and and it speaks to those and and activates those for you. Um, Becoming a human star being and being able to reprogram your DNA. Um, About forgiving and how you can just quantum let go of everything and change your whole reality when you do. And and we go through the forgiveness process one time and then we move on to, to releasing and letting go and we don't have to do that anymore. Um, White light purification actually goes through and and brings white light and works it through you and activates that um, within you. Um, Talking about uh, believing that your reality is fixed and about how you can actually change your realities anytime you want to. Um, These are recorded in rhythms and tones in my voice, and they're done very specifically because of the way they are recorded transmits a frequency. 
that your your inner being, your higher self, your soul, actually hears. And so the words, I speak them so that if you want to listen to it and if you can stay awake, you can listen to the words. But it's, it, it really has nothing to do with the words. The words are for our human so that we can understand. But it's, it's, it's transmitted in frequencies and tones when I speak, uh, which is everything that I do is light encoded, which is what this is. Um, and these, yeah, these I are would, the quantum aspects. Go ahead, sweetheart, Polly. <laughs> I would recommend, because uh, I listened to one of them, and afterwards I did kind of fall into a bit of a um, sleep. <laughs> and so I would recommend, yeah. like, doing a, like, maybe before when you think or bed or exactly yeah. because it's just like I, I was like oh my gosh I gotta get to work like I felt <laughs> like and it took me about 15 minutes to kind of come back you know so. it expands your consciousness it takes you into the other dimensions and when you when you expand into the other dimensions your body shuts down and, and yes I actually recommend people put them all on a thing if they want to. You can do what I call light overload, which is do too much, and then it's going to push everything not okay with you up really, really fast. So you want to be careful of that. Um, but Can people listen to these in their sleep, or do they need to be what conscious with these parts? Yeah, most people will put them, on, put them in, a, in a playlist and put them on replay and just go to sleep. And what okay. they do is they work with your consciousness. That's the beauty of this. You don't have to be awake. And when I was coming through waking up, in the early days, I did a lot of my work in my sleep. I would put stuff on and I would go to sleep to it and let it play during my sleep all night long. And I would wake up and go, well, I don't know what anything said, but I don't care. And I'd go on about my day. And it kept working with me. And, and that's what this does. It will keep working with your consciousness for you if you just stay wide open. And this is about the heart being in it. So, yes, um, the erase and replace energetically your forgotten reality. This brings you into remembering. Um, you hold the key to your new reality. Uh, these don't have to be very long. It, it's the tones and the frequencies that are transmitted and the words that explain or some of them, they sound confusing because they're in rhymes. Because when we start remembering, we start rhyming along the way, too. So everybody will notice that. Uh, things will come through. So for those, it's the activations. And, yes, sleep is, is either be ready to sleep or be okay with going to sleep. Do not do this and drive or try to go off into a meeting or do anything where you actually have to be cohesive, <laughs> coherent. <laughs> because and now after a while, you'll have no effects because you're used to these. Uh, but in the beginning, if you're not used to this, then it will. And so um, the goal is to get to the point where it doesn't. Um, do that to you because you'll know that you've raised your frequency that high that that it doesn't affect you. It can still work with your consciousness, but your the human has to get out of the way, which is why we go to sleep is so our human can and our body's consciousness can raise. Um, does that answer that? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, I, I actually am excited every time somebody tells me that they can't stay awake to my work because that tells me it's doing its job, and I'm like, that's awesome. But that's not the what most people expect to occur because it's the opposite here, and everything is. Um, the other ones are recorded. Uh, it has a recorded group session that we did that's four hours long, and we go through answering the questions, answering people's questions. And I do uh, m- much of my work is answering the questions that people understand, um, souls, humans, whatever you want to use. Um, and then we have a live group session that we're going to do on November 12th that anybody that purchased the package can join us for, which we love because we answer the questions. And it's a group format. And it's, it's sessions, and we go through, um, and we answer what helps everybody in a group format. And then um, the last thing was the Awakening to Remembering book. My first book is very simple. It's very straight and to the point. It explains how we came into this existence and what we're doing here. It talks about um, why we have to sleep so much, why why these things occurred. And, and so it's a, an extremely simplified version of how and why, but it also raises your vibrational consciousness. And so for me, I actually carried the book around with me in my backpack. When I went places and if I felt like I was having a rough day, I would pull the little book out and read a paragraph and boom, I was right back. I could expand really quickly. So I actually used my book myself. Um, 
And then um, the, I believe in here is the newsletters where we send out um, inspiration, support, different things. Um, I write a lot, um, and, and a lot of times I write everything that guides and assists and, and talks about what's kind of going on or how new Earth existence is, how things are um, in our realities now. And so um, all of that, um, which it's hours and hours uh, worth of stuff, for activating each of higher dimensional aspects, multidimensional aspects, soul, spirit, um, whatever words we have. And, and for helping with the understanding, because when we have understanding, it's a lot easier. And, and through that understanding and the knowledge, that's, that's where our power comes from. Because we can completely bypass all the old stuff if we understand that we can, we can do these things and it, and it doesn't have to be that hard. And so... I spend a lot of my energy re-educating uh, according to higher consciousness existence, and that's what this is. So, awesome. Thank you. Wow. That's a great deal for us. It's uh, 14% of the original uh, value, so, um, you know, be sure to take advantage of her ge very generous offer. And um, the download is great too and like we said you know just be sure to be able to sleep <laughs> so, yeah um, yeah well so. and I want to say everybody be so determined that that th this is about grabbing that desire and being so determined for the things you really really want from inside don't let your head get in the way and if it does don't worry about it you're just burning off energy and, and that it's really important that your desire be stronger than your fear. Your desire and your drive be stronger than the lack energy or the non-belief. And so if we need fear and devastation to motivate us, then that's what we call forth in our world. And we don't need that anymore. We can have the awesome things motivate us. But we, we motivate ourselves from inside. And we find the drive and we find the determination this is a part of opening up the body and awakening the body is because that's what comes through is that drive and that determination and the soul purposes and all of these things activate automatically as you focus on your vibrational frequency. And, and your energy is the greatest gift that you have. So focus on your energy because that's where your abundance comes from. That's where everything comes from it is your energy and the vibrational frequency that you maintain and and all. So if you make these your priority, everything will change. Um, it becomes an energetic existence, and it will get bizarre. But that's a – it's bizarre to our human, but it's home to us. So for us, we're like, oh, finally. It, it's weird, and it'll, it'll test your humans. Um, it'll push your human. It'll push those comfort zones. But eventually, we get to the point where we do it ourselves. So basically, we start realizing, well, I can do this, and I can just bypass all that, and it gets really, really easy. And that's what this is about. It's supposed to be easy and fun. And we will go through the intensity. There is not one person that's not going to go through some intensity because we're letting go of all the human stuff. Um, we're transcending that. We're, we're integrating it inside. And everything returns back to this purity and this love that is deeply profound. And and as we return to an existence that we forgot, everything changes. And we don't care about the old stuff anymore. So it's really important that everybody make a choice, make a decision, what's important to you, and, and then focus your energy. Because whatever you focus your energy on, that's what you're creating in your world. Now, if you focus on a thing or you focus on something that is represented by separation, then, then those things don't work. So there are different processes that we've learned. Focus on what makes you happy. Focus on the energy of things. Um, focus on your body. Focus on coming from love. Focus on what's important on the inside. And, and don't worry about the outside world um, because everything's going to shift either with our participation or without it. And we like to participate and we like to enjoy it. And, and we like to we like the awesome part of it. So... We, we get to have more of that when we actually start deciding that we want to participate instead of waiting until something happens to make us. So we learn, and, and that's what experiences are. So 
I hope that helps a little bit for everybody today. So thank you, Zena. Thank you, Lisa. It's been terrific having you, and we I feel very blessed that you joined us today. Well, I am too. I love this. So thank you very much, and thank you guys for joining us um, so very much. And I know you heard my roosters and birds going on, so mahalo. Have a great one. Thank you. You have a beautiful day. You too. Thank you.